From the Emancipation to Windrush exhibition kicked off on the 15th of August 2023 at the Lewisham Shopping Centre, South East London. He explained why hundreds of Caribbean and men and women settled in the UK before and after the date. The 20 panels of text and images summarise the emancipation and Windrush stories. I'm here at the Lewisham Shopping Centre and this exhibition which is produced by the Windrush Foundation uh, is called From Emancipation to Windrush. Um, it's an exhibition which includes texts and images about life in the West Indies from emancipation when nearly a million Africans in the British colonies won their freedom having been enslaved for most or all of their lives. After 1838, August the 1st, African women recreated the family unit which had been severely undermined by enslavers during the previous 200 years. The exhibition summarizes major events that led to emancipation and includes stories of colonial life, the contributions of West Indians to Britain's prosperity, their service in the military, the arrival of hundreds of them on June 22, 1948 at Tilbury Docks, Essex on the Empire Windrush. So the exhibition seeks to raise awareness about those who contributed to ending enforced servitude. The road to freedom was arduous and bloody. Tens of thousands of Africans were killed in their efforts to liberate themselves. Emancipation was the beginning of a long and laborious journey towards the, real, the realization of the right to self-determination. And for this reason, the exhibition concludes with a selection of post-emancipation stories celebrating acts of courage and resilience, which have led to the foundation that we endure and, and, and uh, experience today. I'm in Lewisham Shopping Centre. Uh, it's um, September 2023, and there's an exhibition here for the abolition of, of slavery. Um, and there are lots of boards there. And what picked up my interest was this one here of the Demerara Rebellion, which took place in Guyana. Now, I've not heard about the Demerara Rebellion, I've heard about the Buxton Rebellion, but this Gamerera Rebellion took place on July the 21st, 1823. Uh, and it was estimated about 74,000 enslaved Africans in the colony were, took part in the rebellion. So I'm so glad that um, it was illustrated here. Uh, the, the rebellion, as I read, the owner of the leadership was Jack Gladstone, the son of a born African, born in Kumea. Jack's surname was also the plantation owner of, who was named Sir John Gladstone. And apparently, Sir John Gladstone was the father of the soon to become British Prime Minister, William Gladstone. So it shows that slavery was taken by all of a British society, um, including the Prime Minister of England, Winston William Gladstone, whose father was a slave owner in Guyana. I was really interested in this one in particular because yes. you rarely see an depiction of black men, specifically the Muslims, black people in Guyana. Well, first of all, on horses, that was just scared by so much, but also it's very dignified. Um, and also it shows joy as well. The like and the colours are so just bright and colourful. But there's also just an aspect of 
brief and kind of quantum. Um, yeah, there's just different aspects of the I'm just here in Lewisham looking at the the African Emancipation Day photos and people need to come out and look and see what happened to our people back in the, back in the day. I'm from a very small island called St. Kitts and Nevis and I was so surprised. I thought I knew a lot about slavery, but I don't because I've seen pictures out here that show me things that happened to our people and it's really bad. You know, it, it, it talks about in St. Kitts, the laborers on the plantation resolve not to return to work without pay. It talks about the martial law. It talks about things that happen. But the thing that got me was uh, some of the people sentenced on the treadmill where they hung them from their hands, men and women, and, 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 and flogged them, you know. And, and they said with the pressure also from British anti-apprentice activists, including Joseph Sturge, a Quaker businessman, the British government declared freedom for all apprentices on the 1st of August, 1838. I am not sure if that's actually true, but you need to come out and look for yourself and see what's going on. Because a lot has been done to our people a long time. So this one is the one that I keep gravitating towards where this lady here, great-grandmother Rachel went in search of her children who had been sold into slavery. And the fact that she actually found her daughter, Minty, it took her three days to search, but she did actually find her daughter. But I also think what's um, really poignant about this is that there are probably many, many families that did the same thing and searched for their, their children or their husbands and never found them. And I think that's particularly sad. I think this should be made into a movie, the story, because it's very important that we were, we were taken. The family unit was split. We do not know how to have families. I think that is um, uh, very apparent today that the family unit is still split. Um, but there's always someone there who is in search, who is trying to pull it back together again. Blessings. Where to begin? What I think you're doing is very important. Boy, it's a whole subject with a bad taste to me. Externally, it's bad enough, but racism is still present today in institution and organization causing injustice and holding certain people back because of race and color. I have no single preference with the posters. The truth must be told and mindset will change through education. Why, God bless it. Like, it's smart, man. Don't, yeah. it, it can't take not now we are from there in, in terms of how them to them think, See. but tell us from apart now. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, um, what happened before you know, will happen again. But as far as I said, there's nothing new under the sun. Nothing. nothing. So you see, so you're leaving all these stuff for us. to look in ourselves. Oh, you mean? And a man is just a man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, know, you come in this world with nothing and you go with nothing. With nothing. It's true. Yeah. It's true. But at the end of the day, you know, they struggle. I know now you get the now you get the power. You became the slave master. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but and then he turned and said, no, Father, forgive them because they don't know no, what they do. No, 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 come on, word is a powerful thing, you know. Then forgive them. Yeah. Yeah, forgive not. 
Slavery abolished, you know. I heard about the um, you know, the compensation for the slave master and those make away. But 2015, when I was reading the paper, and I see it at the end of the day, we as taxpayers was paying, you know, paying, you know, help finish paying off that money. I was Bex, you know, I was pissed off, you know, I didn't born into slavery, you know. So, at the end of the day, why me work paying my money? have to pay it back you know so at the end of the day that was a bad taste you, you know to my mouth to really know that you know and externally when you look back <laughs> you know nothing will really change you know the slave, the slave system still can in today just in a different way a clever way you know in the ancient time you pay you as a farmer the best of your, your work you give it to you know, the best have to go to them and then after they take every little thing, then the lick where you eat, where you, where you have leave, you have to survive. And it's the same today. You know, but as the father say, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. You know, you know what happened before will happen again. You know, girl, people have jobs. Remember when I first came to this country, people have jobs and working. They could have lived, they could have eat, they could have go on holiday. Now people have jobs, even top jobs, you know, and they have to be going to food bank, you know, so, you know, nothing changed, you know, but at the end of the day, I like the story of Zacchaeus, you know, tax collector and all these sorts of things, and, you know, when you meet Christ, you know, and you hear the way he talk and those little way, you know, you come to his senses and he say, we we'll pay back everybody that he rub, you know, fourfold and give it to them, you know, and give the money to his poor, you know, so with the compensation we have to pay for, you know, these people still living off of that and they have money, you know, but as I say, consciousness, you know, at the end of the day, you know, things they talk is cheap, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, it's a messed up world of living, you know? We have to just stay focused. Sorry. My comment will be about Sam King. Knowing that he came in this country, worked hard, and after they finished with the war, they went back to Jamaica. Couldn't find a job back home, and he came back. And to be the first black person as a mayor in Sudok, that was an achievement. And he, he, he set up the Windrush thing. He was part of the um, carnival thing. So he did well. He did he contribute, contribute a lot to Sudok. And we, we, we just hope and pray that the young generation, they too can learn from him. Yes, they did well. We also think of, um, yeah, Marcus Garvey. He was a good figure in this country also. And these guys experienced bad, bad racism. Um, Aral Moody was turned on. He came here as a physician. And at King's College, he was turned down because of the color of his skin. And when the conversation I have with Sam King in person, when he talked, is, is it real? It was. The, the, the racism that these people experienced. You know? And it's the same with Marcus Garvey also. They experienced that. So even Mary C. Cole, she did also, because when she asked for help, they turned her down. She had to use her money to look after the soldiers then. The Crimean War, where she went bankruptcy, because she would, because they turned her down, because the color of her skin. 
So these people come and then build Brittany in a way. And we have to, we, have, we should appreciate them. And the Windrush generation, they bring it out more and more. I learn a lot from it. And let's hope we can continue to build on it and don't give up because that's what they did. And we, didn't, we need to continue building upon it. So yeah, this is my contribution to this. And about the religious one that I chose, in those times, it was religion and the Christian faith that take these people through. They didn't give up because they know that their God would see them through. And we just want to say thanks for them. They passed, yes, and gone. But we live to see the effect that it have on us also. So we just want to give thanks for all they did for us. We, we have to lift up these people. God, this is, this is coming from slavery. And it's as if we are still in it. It might not be as bad as that in those days, but we are still because when you look at the things now, because you call off your skin, you are, they, they look at you as if you are nobody. You have, they'd attack you and stuff like that. I experienced it when the guy punched me on the train, when they have to take me, take me off the train. I was bleeding. So we still have to go through it. And we, we can't give up. We can't give up. We can't give up. So yeah, this is my comment and this is my contribution to it. Winrush, Sam King story. Born in Jamaica in 1926, Sam King responded to a Royal Air Force advertisement in the cleaners newspaper for volunteers in 1944. After the war ended, Sam returned back to England on the Empire Wimrush. He rejoined the RAF and later worked for the Royal Mail. In 1983 to 84, he was elected mayor of London, borough of Southwark. He was the first black mayor of the borough and the only black mayor in London at the time. In 1995, King Sam and Arthur Torrington established Windrush Foundation, the first charitable organization whose objective are to keep alive memories of the young men and women who were among the first wave of post-war settlers in England. In 1998, Sam published his autobiography, Climbing Up the Rough Side of the Mountain. Sam King, Mr. Winrush Book. The book attempts to summarize Sam King, 1998, autobiography, climb up the rough side of the mountain and to bring his journey up to date he had published it to mark the 50th anniversary of the empire wimbrush arriving in june 22 1948 it was a bestseller decade and his contribution to the community continues to inspire thousands of people. Enter your email address to download the Sam King, Mr. Winrush ebook at the Winrush Foundation. Mary Seacole Grant, 
23rd of November, 1805 to 14, May, 1881. She was born in Jamaica to a Creole mother who ran a boarded house and had herbalist skills as a doctress. In 1990, Seagull was awarded in Jamaica Order of Merit. In 2004, she was voted the greatest Black Britain in survey conduct in 2003 by the Black Heritage website Every Generation. Mary Seacole, honored as the first Jamaican Black British woman on a Royal Mint coin. It is the second coin to feature a name Black female and has received a Royal Proclamation from King Charles III. The image was believed to have taken by a leading photographer, favoured by Queen Victoria between the late 1860s and early 1870s, according to the Winchester College Archive. Trevor Sterling, Chair of Mary Seacole Trust, said, This is another significant historical moment, and it pays tribute to Mary Seacole as a symbol of the NHS, diversity, social justice, and also in understanding the diverse contribution that have been made to this country. We hope this coin design pays tribute to her incredible legacy and celebrates her adventurous life and diligent work as a heroine in the Crimean War. The poet, Maya Angelou, is the first black woman to be featured in a U.S. quarter. In 1992, she became the first black woman to write and present a poem at the presidential inauguration. She also held more than 30 honorary degrees and published more than 30 best-selling works. Jonathan Franklin. Arnold Ebenezer Tomlinson was born in the parish of Westmoreland, Jamaica, in 1923. As a British subject, particularly as members of the Windrush generation, so named after the Empire Windrush, the ship that brought one of the first groups of West Indian migrants to the UK in 1948. So Arnold Ebenezer Tomlinson came to England in 1956. He remembers being shocked at how cold it was on the dock as he embarked. He got lodgings in Battersea and a working job at a nearby factory. Once he got settled, he sent for his wife. Most of the Windrush generation do send for their wives and family once all were settled. So this is a big thank you to you and from all of us because none of us will be here. I have a card from them to celebrate my husband's birthday and I will make the most of it. 
Will you be watching the coronation of King of the King? Yes, I did. And 67 years living in the UK, look back at the discrimination over the past years, stripped the Windrush generation of their dignity. As the system concluded scandal that saw hundreds of Caribbean immigrants living and working in the UK wrongly targeted by immigration enforcement as a result of the government hostile go environment policies. So Arnold Ebenezer Tomlinson thinks the country has treated him good and bad, but when he weighs it all up, he feels that the good outweighs the bad.